Hey everyone, I'm Mariana, and since the spooky season is now in full swing, I have 10 ridiculously, terrifyingly underrated horror films from this year to recommend to you today. From psychological horror and crazy plot twists to all-out supernatural mayhem, there is something for every horror fan on this list, so if you're looking to discover something new to keep you up at night this fall, get your watch list ready because you've come to the right place. As always, I'm looking forward to even more scary good recommendations from you in the comments below, but let's get started. Opening this list are a few more grounded horror thrillers. Movies that remind us that human nature can be scarier than any story about ghosts and ghouls out there. First up is Low Lifes, a movie that turns a family road trip into a nightmare. Do not be fooled by this simple premise because this film has a lot more to offer than initially meets the eye. A family of four traveling through rural America encounter some questionable locals and are soon left with no choice but to stay the night at a remote homestead, a decision that will put all of them to the test. Now, I know this sounds like a pretty standard setup, but trust me, lowlifes surprised me over and over again. While I can't tell you too much, because this is definitely one of those horror thrillers that you should go into knowing as little as possible, I can definitely promise you that this will deliver the fun and the gore. Lowlifes just knows how to play with the audience's expectations and use that to maintain tension. There are plenty of twists and turns to keep you at the edge of your seat, some very dark humor to keep things moving, and some nasty violence to make you wince. The ending might upset some people, but that's also part of the fun. And personally, I always appreciate a movie that can get under your skin without taking itself too seriously. Something I do take seriously, though, is my coffee, which is why before we move on to the next movie, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Trade Coffee. You guys know how much I love coffee, and it's particularly a must-have for me when the weather gets cooler and things get cozier. It's part of my morning ritual, as well as late afternoon ritual, and with Trade, I know my coffee is freshly roasted, so when I open that bag, it's going to be full of flavor and aroma. Personally, I love a medium roast that's smooth and a little bit sweet like this Owl's Howl from Side Glass, and that's one of the best things about Trade. For every order, they will match you with coffee that's perfect for your taste and brewing method. So the cup of coffee you're having at home every day is always your best cup of coffee. Roasted to order and delivered right to your door directly from America's top independent roasters on a flexible subscription schedule of your choice, it just doesn't get better and more convenient than this. And of course, I have a delicious special offer for you. Right now, when you use my link, drinktrade.com slash impression blend, you will get a free bag of coffee with any subscription. Again, that's drinktrade.com slash impression blend to get your first bag free with any new subscription. It's that easy to instantly improve your at-home coffee experience while also getting some free coffee. And who wouldn't want that? So follow the link below to discover your new favorite blend and thank you so much to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. Back to spooky things, my next recommendation is waiting for you right here on YouTube, made by Curry Baker from the channel That's a Bad Idea, and the movie is Milk and Cereal, with an S. I'm sure you can guess why. In this found footage horror film, a surprise birthday prank takes an unexpected turn for the worse, and a popular social media duo must face the reality of the terrifying aftermath. Now, I know found footage as a subgenre doesn't have the best reputation these days, but this movie is easily one of the best found footage films I've seen in a while. And it's only 62 minutes long, so if you're looking for something quick, disturbing, and free, this is your movie. Milk and Cereal was a very uncomfortable watch for me because of how real these characters and the performances felt. 
I know I'm not the only person here who doesn't like pranksters and prank channels, so to see this get as dark as this movie did felt very unsettling. I'm honestly not sure what disturbed me more as I was watching it. The movie itself, which was definitely disturbing, I mean, that mask alone is nightmare fuel, or the fact that the writer-director was way too convincing as the lead. It's a simple concept done well, and the result is a creepy, tightly paced, and very effective horror film. Next up is a movie that has been slowly picking up some buzz, but not nearly enough, because most people still haven't seen this absolute horror gem. I'm talking about Strange Darling, a very refreshing and creative take on a serial killer film. This is another movie that I have to be very careful not to spoil, because the less you know about it, the better, and this one in particular is at its best when you go into it pretty much blind. Set in rural Oregon, the film focuses on a twisted one-night stand that spirals completely out of control into a serial killer's murder spree. Everything about this movie is not what I expected it to be, so I really do suggest leaving your expectations behind and letting it take you on its strange and gruesome journey. Strange Darling immediately grabs your attention and doesn't let go until the very end. I was constantly at the edge of my seat, not knowing where this movie is going to go next because it really feels like anything could happen. It also features some of the most exciting use of non-linear storytelling I've seen in a long time that keeps challenging you to jump to conclusions only to make you think twice once it reveals new information. It's honestly such a vibrant, entertaining, and unforgettable experience that really stays with you. Plus, Willa Fitzgerald and Kyle Gallner are absolutely fantastic in this, and in an unexpected turn of events, the cinematography is done by Giovanni Ribisi, who makes this film look nothing short of striking. Watch it, it's a twisted fun time. Now, I could not make this video without talking about Red Rooms, one of the best and most haunting films of this year that is criminally underwatched and underappreciated. Red Rooms follows a fashion model, Kelly Ann, who is obsessed with a high-profile, harrowing murder trial. Or is she obsessed with the actual killer himself? As reality blurs with her morbid fantasies, she goes down a dark path seeking the final piece of the puzzle. I have an entire video about this movie, most of which is a spoiler-free review, but part of it is a discussion about the film's symbolism, so definitely check that out for my more detailed thoughts. But in short, Red Rooms is as brilliant as it is horrifying. It's a serial killer procedure thriller without gratuitous violence, and trust me, once you see the subject matter, you will be grateful the violence is used sparingly, because these are things you really don't want to see. The horror here comes from what's being implied, from the sound design, the score that literally sent chills down my spine a few times, the things that were being told. Instead of facing the viewers with gore for shock value, it explores what lies under the surface as it brings forward the darkest corners of humanity, questioning our obsession with true crime, and all of this is so incredibly effective. The movie is dark, twisted, moody, thought-provoking, and highly unsettling. It's an absolute must-watch. But let's shift gears a little bit and talk about a few movies that twist our reality. First up is a horror gem from South Korea, Sleep, an intentional slow burn that masterfully walks the line between dark comedy and psychological horror. The movie is about a newly married couple expecting their first child. Seemingly out of nowhere, the husband starts talking in his sleep, and from that night forward, his bizarre nighttime behavior becomes increasingly more menacing. Because of this, the wife begins to feel that her unborn child, 
may be in danger. I love when a movie can effectively make you question what is actually going on. And if paranoia based horror is your kind of thing, sleep is definitely for you. This movie might give you a false sense of security with its playful tone and slower pacing in the beginning, but believe me when I tell you that things certainly escalate. Is it madness? Is it anxiety? Is it something else? Should you take a closer look at your own or your partner's sleeping patterns? All I know is that I was laughing, then I was concerned, but still laughing nervously, and then I was genuinely creeped out. It may be a slow burn and it will be too slow for some, but the dread escalates and so do the stakes, culminating in an ending I was not expecting when this movie started. My next recommendation is another movie that's slowly gaining popularity, but it really deserves to be one of the biggest streaming hits of the year, so if you haven't watched It's What's Inside yet, I'm here to give you that final push. The basic premise is this, a pre-wedding reunion descends into an existential nightmare for a group of college friends when a surprise guest arrives with a mysterious suitcase, challenging everyone to a very unusual game that takes walking in someone else's shoes to the next level. Out of this entire list, this movie is the easiest one to recommend to almost anyone because as mind-bending as it gets, it's simply a fun time. To illustrate the overall vibe of this movie, it's Bodies 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 meets Knives Out with a bit of a Black Mirror sci-fi twist. It's a pretty trippy and twisted ride where you watch obnoxious characters descend into chaos because you know, you just know that all of this is going to go very wrong in the best way. It's also great to see a movie that has some fun with the editing and color to support its storytelling, which gives It's What's Inside a very distinct tone and energy. But watching this group of friends unravel inside a mansion over the course of one night as the filmmakers keep you guessing what could possibly go wrong next while also keeping things pretty light is what makes this horror thriller an absolute blast from beginning to end. Okay, listen, if you're like me and you don't like spiders, this next movie is truly the stuff of nightmares because Infested will introduce you to an absurd number of these nasty creatures. In this film, residents of a rundown French apartment building have to find a way to survive against a massive army of deadly, rapidly reproducing spiders. And this may sound a bit too silly, but the situation gets out of hand very quickly in the most horrendous way. Look, I don't know what else to tell you, I was horrified the entire time. And I get that part of this is my personal fear of spiders, but I am telling you, the way all of this is shown will send shivers down anyone's spine. They made these spiders scary, without a question, and they also look real, which just adds to the effect. With movies like this, it's easy to make the creepy crawlies look like alien monsters, which can take you out of the experience, but not here. On top of this, there's an element of social commentary here, which I did not expect, and that aspect is also done well, giving the movie some nuance and making it work on more than one level. But even if you just want to take it at face value, it will not disappoint. Infested is intense, thrilling, and at times unexpectedly emotional, so don't be surprised if it has you checking every corner of your house for signs of unwelcome eight-legged guests after you're done watching it. All right, I promised all-out supernatural mayhem, so here we go. First up, vampires. Here comes a really long movie title, Humanist Vampire Seeking Consenting Suicidal Person. The story is about Sasha, a young vampire who is too sensitive to feed on humans. She just can't bring herself to do it, even though she needs blood to survive. Her parents decide to force her into it by cutting off her blood supply, but luckily she meets Paul, a lonely teenager who is willing to give his life 
to save hers. This might sound weird, but this was 100% my kind of coming of age story. It is such a sweet and charming movie with just the right amount of darkness, I loved it. At its core, it's a story of two lonely people who struggle to fit in, finding each other, which is a tale as old as time, but the vampire angle gives it a unique twist. And before you start wondering if it's some sappy, sexy vampire romance, let me assure you, it is not. It's an indie horror comedy that's weird and quirky without leaning too far into that, and the romantic elements are pretty understated as well. Mostly, it leans into empathy and finding the confidence to follow your own path, which are themes I always find compelling in movies. This film is the perfect choice for those of you who still want to get into the spooky spirit, but don't actually want something outright scary. Instead, opting for a darker tone and atmosphere. But really, it's another movie I would recommend to pretty much anyone. It's lovely, moody, and just the right kind of weird. Now, if you're looking for something a bit more intense, let me introduce you to Exuma, another South Korean horror film on this list. Spirits, curses, shaman rituals, it's all here. The movie is essentially about a cursed ancestral gravesite. A team of paranormal experts mess with the wrong grave and have to deal with the consequences. And this might make you think that it's a pretty straightforward entry in the paranormal genre, but Exuma has plenty of twists and turns to throw you off. For me, this is one of the best horror films of the year, and if you're a fan of The Wailing, this is definitely the movie for you. Also, if you're a horror fan, and you still haven't seen The Wailing, what are you even doing? Watch that ASAP. I will say, the structure is a little strange because it feels like two different stories put into one movie, which also does weird things to the pacing, but in the end, I think it actually works, and despite the traditional elements of the genre, it feels fresh and original. Plus, it's starring our favorite old boy, Choi Min Sik, and you just can't go wrong with him. The characters are easy to root for, it's nice to see a movie movie focused on the experts who are doing everything they can rather than on the confused victims. The movie is creepy, disturbing, and undeniably atmospheric, rich in lore and rituals, which are all things I love to see in this type of horror film. But my favorite supernatural horror of this year is definitely Oddity, and I am shocked it's not more popular. It was everything I was hoping it would be, and so much more more. After the brutal murder of her twin sister, Darcy, a self-proclaimed psychic and collector of cursed items, decides to go after those she suspects to be responsible by using haunted items as her tools for revenge. This movie feels like the perfect blend of Edgar Allan Poe and Mike Flanagan, which is already a winning combo, but it also knows how to play with classic horror tropes while still keeping the audience guessing. I love pretty much everything about this movie. The story itself, the beautiful cinematography, the excellent performances, the perfectly creepy atmosphere, the folklore that was part of the mix, and all of the different tools it used to scare its audience. Personally, I found it to be actually scary, but in the best classic horror way, to the point where even though the setting is clearly modern, it somehow still feels tiny timeless, almost like an ambiguous period piece. I also loved this movie's unique blend of genres. It's supernatural horror, of course, but there's also a bit of psychic stuff going on, a bit of asylum mixed in, some murder mystery, and a couple of other things I'm going to leave as a surprise. And on top of all that, Oddity delivers when it comes to payoff, with one of the most perfectly executed endings I've seen in a while. Would I say this underrated horror gem is the best horror movie of the year? Absolutely. And if you're looking for even more horror recommendations, you should check out one of these videos next.